these are two of the most important antiquities we have in the store. They're obviously Egyptian. Hi, I'm Rob, and I'm ready to start. If you like ancient artifacts, uh, rare coins, and other vintage collectible things, then you're really going to like this video. I recently had the opportunity to sit down and interview Dr. Arnold Saslow of Ye Olde Curiosity Shop in South Orange. We talked a little bit about his business, his collection, and focused on a few cool pieces in his shop. So I hope you enjoy this interview. I'm Dr. Arnold Saslow. I'm the owner of the Old Curiosity Shop located at 111 South Orange Avenue in the center of South Orange Village. We are the largest store in the state of New Jersey that sells the things you normally see in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We deal in Byzantine, Roman, Greek, Egyptian, Pre-Columbian, American Indian, and African. The main purpose of the store is coins and stamps. We buy and sell and offer free appraisals of American and foreign coin stamps and paper money. Most coin stores no longer exist. Uh, this is kind of an anomaly that we've been here for 28 years, uh, but we've been very successful. We do estates, uh, we do auctions that we buy at, we consign to major auction companies around the world, and uh, this is a very, very unusual store. All the items you're gonna see, the antiquities, we love dealing in those. We're, we're basically uh, students of history. And we also sell to the public. We also sell to the New York dealers. Okay, this is a collection of Roman glassware. Now, if some of these things look like you're drinking uh, tumblers, uh, you're correct. The Romans uh, had a special uh, dish that we would consider disgusting. Uh, the way we use ketchup, they use fermented uh, fish guts. So these small containers were individual uh, containers that they would put on the table for people to pour this fermented fish guts onto their food uh, for flavoring. You'll now see Greek pottery. This is all tableware uh, that would be used uh, in a normal Greek household. Like I said, the more money you have, uh, the more fancy it was. Of African ceremonial masks, these are actually the type of masks that they would wear during uh, various uh, religious uh, ceremonies. All African masks like this are usually around 50 years old uh, because of termites, uh, the only stuff that's hundreds of years old, uh, you're gonna see in the museums they had collected in uh, like the 1800s and put it away. Uh, today, these probably would be very difficult to bring into the United States, uh, especially because of the uh, uh, grass that's attached because you can't bring in foreign plant stuff. They're very worried about uh, insects. These are two of the most important antiquities we have in the store. They're obviously Egyptian. Uh, the one on the left uh, is part of a tomb wall. It's made of limestone uh, carved with the head of a princess. She's wearing uh, the crown of Upper Egypt. Uh, the piece next to it is a full store depicting the god Horus, the hawk god. Now, he's got the solar disk on his head, and if you look carefully, he's holding an ankh, the life sign, and the false door was part of the tomb that allowed the soul to go in and out uh, to visit, so to speak. Uh, but of course, it was, uh, in this case, it's uh, solid limestone. This is a Roman key ring. Dates about, well, let's say 150, 200 AD. The Romans obviously had money, silver, gold, and bronze coins, and they would keep them in their home in a large chest. Obviously, the box would be locked. This ring would unlock the box. It's an actual key ring. Everybody's always fascinated about this Egyptian Sphinx that we have sitting here. It's made of fiberglass. This is actually a prop from the movie Cleopatra starring Elizabeth Taylor. This pillar that you see is also from the movie Cleopatra. The hieroglyphs don't make any sense. It's actually wood uh, covered with gesso that's been carved. They are for sale. If you've ever wanted a giant Sphinx in your backyard, uh, we have one. Okay, what actually supports our business is the buying and selling of American and foreign coin stamps and paper money. What I'm holding is a tray of Roman bronze coins. This is the family of Constantine the Great, the first Christian emperor. But not enough people know that you can buy them and they only cost $50. Uh, here we have a tray of uh, gold coins from all over the world. This particular tray happens to have 
a lot of coins from England and from France. You can see uh, King Edward uh, VIII and Queen Victoria. Sorting through coin collections. Unfortunately, a lot of what a coin dealer has to do for a living. And then you have to have reference books. Lots and lots and lots of reference books. And you try to figure out exactly what you have compared to what the book has. You know, you can't just say, I'm going to pick the good stuff and you get to take a junk home. That doesn't work. We are the largest autograph dealer in the state of New Jersey that actually has a store. And we have tons of sports autographs. When somebody says I was at a ball game and I met Joe DiMaggio and I got him to sign a ball, we have that in stock. So we have balls from DiMaggio and uh, Mantle and Willie Mays and all the famous players. Uh, we have presidents, we have astronauts, we have leaders of states from all over the world. Uh, we have a very, very large uh, inventory of autographed material. My background is, first of all, I was going to be from the age of 10 a veterinarian until I found out I was uh, too small for large animals and probably would shoot the people that had dogs named Fluffy. So I switched over to bacteriology and virology, uh, graduated from the University of Connecticut. Then I went to Yale Medical School as an infectious disease epidemiologist. Then I was on the faculty of the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine and Public Health. And then I transferred to the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine, where I ran for four years uh, a program evaluating the vaccine uh, for a pneumonia called Pneumovax. Uh, I thought I was just going to take a one-year sabbatical and take my former wife and kids uh, to London for a year, a year. Well, once I got to London, after a few months, I hooked up with a major, major dealer from Beverly Hills, one of the largest dealers in the United States named Ira Goldberg. With that point, he and his family owned a company called Superior Stamp and Coins. Ira said, hey, you're in London for a year. Why not start acting as my agent? And uh, after one year, they said, you know, we both made so much money. How about staying two years? So I said, okay, two years. And after two years, they said, well, we keep making an awful lot of money, so why don't you stay for three years? And I said, okay, I will stay for three years. And at that point, my former wife said, what are we going to do with the kids? So I sent my wife uh, to New Jersey on a fact-finding trip, and I said, well, we have to be someplace that's near an airport. From 1981 on, I said, well, I'm going to act as an independent dealer. I became, at that point, one of the biggest buyers uh, in the United States and very well known internationally. Uh, dealing in ancient uh, Roman and Greek, especially gold coins. I would fly back to Europe almost every three weeks, and I would attend an auction over there. Over the years, I assembled multi-million dollar collections of ancient Greek and Roman. Uh, one of my most famous collections was donated to the University of Colorado at Boulder. So I said, you know what? I really like dealing with the public. How about I'm going to start looking for uh, the gallery space in New Jersey? So here we are, 28 years later and 28 years older. Uh, we still put things in auction all over the world. We still are recognized all over the world as a major dealer, and we often buy at auctions. Today, I'm leaving the shop with this Roman key ring. If your interest is in the history of mankind, this is the type of store to see. Thank you for watching this video. I really want to do more interviews like this. So if you guys have anybody in mind that you want me to interview, go ahead and share that with me in the comments below. I will also continue to make fashion music and vlog videos. So like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next one.